The Iraq War, a horrible, catastrophic mistake that never should have been waged. We never should have invaded that country. They had no weapons of mass destruction. Everybody seems to know it now, including the person most responsible for it, George W. Bush. Was this an oops moment? Was this a Freudian slip? Interesting remarks from the former president. Again, if it wasn't for him, there would have been no Iraq war. I think it had something to do with the father finishing his business, something between the Bushes, who knows. But he said this yesterday in Dallas. The decision of one man to launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq. Now, unjustified, brutal invasion of Iraq. Absolutely. Why is he saying that? Now, I'm going to put those words in its full context. It seems like he wanted to say Ukraine, and this might be a gaffe, but I think deep down he finally knows it. This is like the Robert McNamara moment. Decades later, McNamara said, oh yeah, Vietnam kind of made a big mistake on that one. Let's go through it. The Iraq war. What did we get out of it? When we invaded that country in 2003, it was all about getting weapons of mass destruction. Remember that? The war on terror. Hey, sounded okay to me, I guess, although I was skeptical. I mean, he used to say that we're going there because Saddam Hussein shot at our pilots. Well, I was one of those pilots, and I knew that we had complete air superiority over Iraq. That didn't ring true to me. Also, there was a UN weapons inspector, Scott Ritter, saying he does not have weapons of mass destruction. I was skeptical, but we did it and there were none. And then there was that long, costly occupation. Remember that? Troops just hanging around, really, for no particular reason. And we were targets. They were targets. It was awful. And we had an, a rank amateur by the name of Paul Bremer pretending he was some sort of viceroy. Do you remember this guy making catastrophically stupid decision after catastrophically stupid decision? firing the Republican Guard, getting rid of the Iraqi military. There are so many things that he did without thinking, and he did not have any experience in that region, any su substantial experience. And what did our troops deal with? We were just sitting ducks, picked off, IED after IED. Remember this? But it was all necessary, right, to make the world safe from the terrorists and safe from the weapons of mass destruction. Remember when Colin Powell went to the United Nations and said, yeah, we got to do this for the weapons of mass destruction. Let's go through the costs of the war. I mean, the dollars, the casualties, the Iraq war, eight years, nearly 5,000 Americans killed, 175,000 Iraqis killed, $1.1 trillion spent, and no weapons of mass destruction, no weapons. You know, we did get Saddam Hussein, and some people try to tell me, well, that was worth it. We had to get rid of Saddam Hussein. Well, I don't really care who's running Iraq. I'm sorry, I don't. I don't know if it was worth it. 1.1 trillion and all those lives lost. You know, if you have a problem with your neighbor, you want your neighbor out. Do you want to blow up the whole block? I don't think so. All right, so George W. Bush back in Dallas. Let's uh, give his comments some breathing room. Political opponents are imprisoned or otherwise eliminated from participating in the electoral process. The result is an absence of checks and balances in Russia and the decision of one man to launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq. I mean, of Ukraine. <laughs> Iraq, too. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> 75. Uh. <laughs> it's a punchline. It's a punchline. And not for the first time. He used to joke around the White House, no weapons of mass destruction. He'd go looking around the Oval Office, no weapons of mass destruction here. It was a joke then. It's a joke now. And um, I'm not okay with that. Are you? This man never should have been president. More on that in a moment. Something else from that speech. I mean, of Ukraine, <laughs> Iraq too, anyway. Uh. Iraq too, Iraq too. He somehow recognizes on some level 
Is he taking responsibility? I don't know. He's a pretty simple guy, of course. He was the governor of Texas. Not the hardest thing to do when your dad is the uh, former president of the United States. There he is running and sworn in in 1994. And people were saying right then and there that he's probably going to be president someday. Why? Why? What made him worthy of that job? Becoming governor of Texas? That's kind of a small governorship. It really is. It's not, at the time, it wasn't really considered all that powerful, all that influential. The lieutenant governor did all the work. How about all of his uh, activities with the Texas Rangers? Was he that good of a front man for the Texas Rangers? I don't think so. I don't think so. What he was good at was being the president's son. When you're the president's son and uh, you've got unlimited access combined with some credentials from a prior campaign, in Washington, D.C., people tend to respect that. I mean, access is power. And uh, I can find my dad and talk to him any time of the day. Why don't we just call him Hunter? Sounds like Hunter Biden. So through our crazy political system, this mediocrity becomes president of the United States. And a few months later, we're hit. September 11, 2001. Now, there's all kinds of evidence, by the way, that shows George W. Bush was asleep at the switch. All kinds of warnings in the summer of 2001 that Al-Qaeda was planning to do something big, and we didn't do enough to counteract that. Now, he did have one brief shining moment, I'll give him this, when he went to the World Trade Center site and the, the crowd was actually kind of frustrated with him because they couldn't hear him, and anyway, he said a few good words, but it was all talk. It was all talk because we really didn't do much. We went into Afghanistan light and late. Took about, what, five, six weeks before we actually struck back, before we actually hit Afghanistan. We should have been pounding Afghanistan within hours, within hours. Why did we give Al-Qaeda such a head start? By then, they were hard to find. The airstrikes, they weren't terribly effective, but we're told that at the early stages of the war in Afghanistan, they were already thinking about Iraq. They had to save resources, personnel, equipment for what was about to happen in Iraq. Paul O'Neill, the Treasury Secretary, says Iraq came up in February of 2001 at the first cabinet meeting. Only one person has had really the guts, the strength, and the integrity to call out the Bushes on this, on the suitable stage. I mean, when everybody was watching. Do you remember this? I could care less about the insults that Donald Trump gives to me. It's blood sport for him. He enjoys it, and I'm glad he's happy about it. He but I am sick and tired, I am sick and tired of him going after my family. My dad is the greatest man alive in my mind. And while, while Donald Trump was building a reality TV show, my brother was building a security apparatus to keep us safe, and I'm proud of what he did. And he's had the gall to go the after my World Trade mother. Center came he's down during your brother's reign. He's had the gall to go after my mother. Remember that. Hold on. Let me finish. He's had the gall to go after my mother. That's not keeping Look, us safe. Look, I won the lottery when I was born 63 years ago and looked up and I saw my mom. mom my mom is the strongest woman I know. She should this be running. This is not about my family or his family. Uh, she should be running. I was so pleased that this happened because no Bush deserved to be in the White House after that. I'm sorry, not George W. Bush's brother after Iraq, sorry. And uh, oh yeah, 9-11, Donald Trump went there and he did on Iraq as well. Obviously the war in Iraq was a big fat mistake, all right? It was a mistake. The war in Iraq, we spent $2 trillion, thousands of lives. We don't even have it. Iran is taking over Iraq with the second largest oil reserves in the world. Obviously, it was a mistake. So George Bush made a mistake. We so, can make mistakes, but that one was a beauty. We should have never been in Iraq. We have destabilized right. the Middle East. Absolutely. So right. And uh, they hated them for it. I'm talking about the Republican establishment. And that's the Bushes. So when George W. Bush goes around the country, he is full, I believe, of hatred of Donald Trump. Oh boy, and Jeb, and what he said on that stage. Well, you could say, well, wait a second, how was that manifested? He doesn't hate Donald Trump. Yes, he does, and he hates his supporters. By 
falsely characterizing us along the same lines as the terrorists, those who attacked us on 9-11. Listen to this. September 11th, 2021, George W. Bush comes to New Jersey, I believe, for the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And we have seen growing evidence that the dangers to our country can come not only across borders, but from violence that gathers within. There is little cultural overlap between violent extremists abroad and violent extremists at home. But in their disdain for pluralism, in their disregard for human life, in their determination to defile national symbols, they are children of the same foul spirit and it is our continuing duty to confront them. He's talking about the January Sixers. Nobody mistook what he was talking about. And it was horrible. A guy like that, huh? And his team, what about his team who took us into the wrong country for the wrong reason and no weapons of mass destruction? And Bushes and those loyal to them are actually running around the country trying to cancel former members of the Trump administration. They're actually doing it and they own it. Take a look at this, the Lincoln Project. We're constructing a database of Trump officials and staff that will detail their roles in the Trump administration and track where they are now. No personal info, only professional, but they will be held accountable. It's open season on anybody associated with Donald Trump in the private sector. And even, especially, former administration officials who are more loyal to the swamp than the country are going along with it. Take a look at this. You don't have to be in the administration to smell the crazy coming off of Stephen Miller. It, you can see it a mile away. Are you surprised that that guy specifically, I mean, guys like that, but let's just go with that guy specifically, who was so redolently crazy and poorly informed and just balls out racist, would still get jobs right now. He is working for David McCormick's campaign in Pennsylvania, a supposedly reasonable Republican who hired him in order to get Trump's endorsement, but then didn't get it. And yet Stephen Miller is still sucking on the GOP political gravy because no one has the courage to put these guys out to pasture. Does that shock you that people that you know are terrible for America can still get jobs in mainstream political circles? I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. That's the former Secretary of Defense to Trump, Mark Esper, saying that former Trump administration officials should be driven from politics, that they shouldn't be able to work again. Why? What did they do that was so wrong? Did they invade the wrong country? No. Let's take a look at the cost one more time, please. Yes. 5,000 Americans killed, nearly 200,000 Iraqis killed, right? No weapons of mass destruction. And they should be driven from political life. What did Donald Trump do that was so terrible? What has them horrified? Was it the Bible in front of the church? Was it the Bible in front of the church? Was it the mean tweets? He did not invade the wrong country. He kept us out of war. George W. Bush, what did you say? The decision of one man to launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq. He can go out and give a speech. No one's driving him from society. Uh, where did he get this insight? Hmm? All those amateurish paintings, the time alone with the canvas. Is this how he figured out uh, he was wrong? I don't know, because I haven't really seen too much of George W. Bush, really. He's been partying. I know that. Hanging out with Obama and Clinton on a, well, it looks like they're on a yacht without a care in the world. It's another reason why they don't like Trump. He doesn't party with them. He doesn't play by, he doesn't play their games. He works for us. He's still doing it. Those guys are on a yacht. And this guy, every Friday and Saturday night out there stumping for a candidate who believes in America first. There is no contest. I wonder what's going to happen to George W. Bush. I really do.